Aris, Padui, uh, Ibusitia, and Dina. First of all, thank you very much for helping to organize this very important webinar. Uh, dear colleagues and friends in the audience, I'm very pleased to be representing ARNEC, the Asia-Pacific Regional Network on Early Childhood, at this important webinar. I want to focus especially on this issue of vulnerable children and what happens to them after uh, COVID-19, not is finished, but after there's meant to be a new normal. Uh, and I'm looking especially at what happens after schools and ECD programs are reopened. Most of the discourse up to now has dealt with issues of what can be done now with children basically at home, or what will happen in terms of the mechanics of reopening, which grades first, uh, how many hours, uh, et cetera. But I think not enough attention has been paid to this issue about what have been increasing disparities as a result of the working from home, the schooling from home, and from the general pandemic itself. COVID-19 is a real emergency. The lives of young children are in fact being seriously disrupted from many perspectives. These figures change all the time and they're probably going to go start, start going down as we get more schools opening. But as of June 1st or so, there were 1.57 billion children out of school, 90% of all school age or school attending children. And 180 countries had various kinds of school closures for weeks or for months. The point I want to make especially then is that disparity, exclusion and inequity have increased as a result of this, these school closures. And that COVID-19 will have a very long-term and far-reaching impact on everyone, but also especially on vulnerable, disadvantaged families and children. Now, I would argue the impact of the COVID-19 on the East early childhood development subsector will be more than on other subsectors of education, primary, secondary, higher, higher. Well, more families will be impoverished. We know already that the sheer number of families who are going back into poverty or are going into poverty is increasing. Many ECD programs, in fact, may close due to less support from families and communities, probably not government funded or supported programs, but those supported by families and communities. There was a recent um, article in the Bangkok Post about the sheer number of programs, ECD programs that are, are already closing or not planning to reopen because of this problem. Many ECD facilitators and teachers may leave the profession. Again, Primary school teachers are more or less guaranteed a post to go back to. Uh, ECD teachers and facilitators in the private sector are not. They've not had salaries in many cases. They have probably found other things to do and they may not ever return to early childhood development. Also, the quantity and quality of the ECD workforce will therefore be diminished. Some of the best ECD teachers might not come back some of those that are most energetic perhaps will not. So the general quality of the workforce will go down. And finally, budgets of ministries involved in ECD may be reduced, not only education, but others. As funds are transferred to other sectors, especially to the health sector, a certain percentage of budget from all ministries in Thailand, for example, have been transferred to the health ministry. And funding for early childhood development may be diverted within ministries of education to what are considered more important levels, whether it be primary, secondary, or higher. So the impact is greater on children already facing challenges of their development and their early learning. And this includes many, just a few for this purpose, children with delays and disabilities, children living in poverty, children living in remote and rural areas, children not fluent in the national language of instruction, children of refugee and migrant families, internally displaced persons, for example. Many of these children, first of all, no longer have access to child development and early learning services with a set routine and a trained workforce. Okay. Uh, schools and ECD programs offered a set routine, an organized systematic routine for many children with a workforce trained to assist them in their development and learning they no longer have access to this in many cases. And this is especially true for children with disabilities who would have received probably some special services in their own 
programs and schools and are not able to receive those at home. Many of these children also do not have access to adequate technological resources, computers, internet services required for online learning. The digital divide will therefore only increase. And there have been many, many articles from around the world showing the impact of the fact that the rich, urban, rich urban uh, families have access to internet and the poor rural ones do not. The impact on this and child's learning is immense. Many of these children also live in families unable to provide the same support found in early childhood programs. They can't provide systematic cognitive stimulation or structured play or systematic early learning that would have been the hallmark of early childhood development programs. And the families perhaps lack the skills to actually do this. And there's also these children will lose important interactions with other children if they're at home. And virtual learning, even for young children, is really no substitute for group play and stimulation. Many of these children also with their families fear stigma and greater stress because communities have less empathy for others and fear outsiders, especially migrants and refugees. We know this already from various situations around Asia, Southeast Asia, where families affected by the virus, uh, perhaps some members of them ill with the virus, are basically not allowed to return to their original homes and communities. Many of these children will no longer benefit from non-academic programs that are focused on children of poor families, health services provided through primary school and early childhood, immunization, feeding and nutritional suppl supplementation programs. There's already evidence to indicate that the levels of immunization of children around the world are going down not only because of poverty, but because families are avoiding health services. And a recent article talked about the sheer number of children in terms of children mortality and mothers in terms of maternal mortality that will increase because of an pandemic. Many of these children are also more subject to toxic stress in their family environments. Again, reports around the world the sheer number of the increase of calls to police and to emergency services linked to domestic violence because of lockdowns and greater poverty. This creates, creates and increases the toxicity of the environments in which children are being raised. And many of these children are also falling further behind their vulnerable, marginalized peers. So whatever disparities they had at the beginning of the pandemic, whether it's because of urban, rural, rich, poor, abled, disabled, majority, minority, whatever disparities there were at the beginning of, of the pandemic have likely, and in many cases we know, have already increased and therefore will mark what happens when schools and ECD programs are reopened. So with the new normal, whatever that means and whenever it happens, many vulnerable children may find their ECD program closed or its workforce, in fact, um, dispersed and not available, depleted in terms of number and in terms of quality. Many of these vulnerable children may not be able to enroll or re-enroll because of greater family poverty. Um, they may have to attend, therefore, lower quality programs because they can't afford more expensive ones, or skip early childhood programs entirely and move directly to less expensive primary schools. This is the case where primary education, as in Indonesia, is essentially free, but early childhood development programs are not. Poor families will therefore do what they've done in the past and move children directly into primary schools without the benefits and experience of early childhood development programs. Many vulnerable children may no longer have an ECD program or a primary school as a sanctuary that can make up the social and eco economic disadvantage of their families, families which may have many fewer books, less educated, less literate caregivers. These programs were often seen as sanctuaries for children living in toxic environments or environments that had few development or education resources. Um, if they can't re-enroll, if they can't go back, they will lose this sanctuary that they had before. Thus, in summary, their well-being will be seriously affected more malnourished, less healthy, less sense of security, and with their cognitive and social-emotional development seriously disrupted. 
And my point is that most of the discourse, again, around COVID and education doesn't look at this at all. It looks again at the what's happening now in terms of helping children somehow continue to learn. It looks at the mechanics of reopening, but it doesn't look at what teachers have to do and parents have to do and systems have to do to identify the increased disparities that might have resulted from the pandemic and to do something about it. I think essentially, therefore, that we are moving backward. Okay. This is out of order. Uh, the possible mitigation strategies. Well, we're talking about, for example, feeding programs, nutritional supplementation, and family subsidies. Make sure these are back in place in any programs once they are reestablished. Special assistance, children with disabilities, home visits, adjusted online material. Make sure that children with disabilities have special attention when they go back to school, when they go back to ECE programs. They will need that to catch up to what they might have lost as a result of the pandemic. Low tech and no tech solutions to distance learning. We're, we're seeing now that even when schools are reopened, there is the fact that many children will still one way or another uh, have to work with distance learning, whether it be that some grades are open first and others not, that in some cases children go to school one week and not the next week. So we have to, in this case, continue to look for low tech and no tech solutions to distance learning. We have to look at how to strengthen family support strategies to meet the demands for distance learning, but also the risks of domestic violence. How can we provide support to families through the school, the ECD program, through other services to make sure that they, they weather these challenges they face and help and are able to help their children to get back into school? And there are also future strategies for make up, to make up for lost contact hours. And we have research from uh, contexts where you have long summer hours or long summer holidays, and even two or three week holidays, and the amount of learning that is lost as a result of that. So how do we make up for lost contact hours, especially for the most vulnerable children, and to overcome disparities from the impact of the pandemic? So I think, um, and I guess I'm a fairly uh, glass half empty kind of person with some amount of pessimism, without such mitigation strategies, I think that the gains of the last decade or decades will be lost. We're looking at the achievement of sustainable development goals, uh, goal 4.2 about early childhood development, even the goals that were found in the education for all movement out of Jomtien and Dakar, I think we'll be going backwards in terms of the rates and other kinds of things. Why? Because more families will be impoverished, as I said, they're going to sink back into poverty, unemployment and inability to be able to find work. The access of child development services will be reduced. They will close. They will be more difficult to access. Enrollment rates in ECD programs and primary schools will likely fall, partly because of poverty, but partly because of fears of parents that they're not, they cannot be guaranteed that their children will be safe when schools are reopened. The strength and energy of the ECD subsector will be threatened, and the capacity of ECD personnel will be seriously compromised. We're looking at the last decade or more, a slowly increasing quantity and quality of the ECD workforce. And that's important. And also slow increases in the enrollment rates in ECD programs. My fear is that we're going to be going backwards instead of making more progress towards the sustainable development goal. And we have to figure out how to solve that. Um, so my basic message then is, how do we actually manage to be able to get schools and ECD programs to think now, education systems that support them, to think now about how to identify first the increasing disparities that would have arisen as a result of the pandemic and home learning and domestic violence and the lack of special services, and ensure that somehow this increase of disparities is taken into account when schools and ACD programs reopen. And that, I think, would be the challenge. Yes. Just one note in terms of positives. I think we're looking at certain things. For example, we're talking about the new normal, whatever that means. And that means how to build back better from the reverses we might have had. What can we do better to 
in fact go in the opposite direction. We're looking at curriculum enhancement, inclusion of things like resilience, coping with stress, even in the early childhood development curriculum. The question is the greater engagement of parents and caregivers. Right? Yes? You have one minute left. Okay, the greater engagement and I wish I'd had a warning earlier, uh, better and more use of technology and the opportunity to invest in family and community preparedness. I just want to say one thing and in closing about ARNEC is holding webinars itself to facilitate the ECD community response. There have been already seven uh, webinars, uh, just one two days ago on the ECD work workforce, and there will be two more on the nutrition of young children and policy discussions. So please visit the ARNEC website for a copy of an article that this topic, my presentation has been based on, but also a wide range of other resources appropriate to early childhood development during and after the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sheldon Shepard, your presentation just in time. And uh, it's really um, triggering further discussions. You, you've um, given such a, a interesting